Good morning and welcome to Wenatchee, Washington, the first Sunday in October of 2025. We're going to start locally by looking at the bedrock here, the gneiss, the metamorphic gneiss. Then we'll zoom out, talk about some regional connections, and we'll finish this video zooming out even farther to a zoom out that most people are unwilling to think about but I'd like to do that here this morning. This metamorphic gneiss, known as the Swakane biotite gneiss, is the dominant bedrock here just north of Wenatchee. Let's break a little bit open, see what it looks like. In the morning sun, I think you can see how sparkly this stuff is. At least I hope you can. I'll focus with my nose. So there's foliation here, kind of a weak foliation. And the sparkles are the black biotites. Kind of a salt and pepper look on the inside. Kind of a ugly, corroded outside look. And if you kind of squint, you might be able to see, in other words, if you make your eyes go fuzzy, this kind of looks like a sandstone. And that's the first major point. It used to be. This is metamorphic rock today, but originally it was an arcosic sandstone. The dates that we have now for the Swakane gneiss is that this stuff was originally 80 million year old sandstone and 72 million years ago it was converted into a metamorphic rock. There's still discussion about the Swakane gneiss. So am I saying that there was originally sandstone here? I am. And now it's metamorphic rock, this Swakane gneiss? Yes, I am. But it gets more interesting than that when you realize that there is sandstone up on Vancouver Island and the Gulf Islands, north of the border. The Nanaimo Formation. The Nanaimo Formation is the protolith for the Swakane biotite gneiss. Had you heard that before? There's all sorts of detailed chemistry, detrital zircon, and other ways to back up that statement. So that's kind of cool that the Nanaimo sandstone is now basically masquerading as a metamorphic rock down here by Wenatchee. It's the same stuff. But we're going to keep zooming out to realize some connections that are pretty wild. So here's the outline for today. Swakane gneiss used to be arcosic sandstone. It's now metamorphic. Biotite is the dominant mineral that you can see. 72 million year old creation of the metamorphic rock was originally roughly 80 million years ago as Nanaimo sandstone. Buried more than 20 miles down. Mm, 20 kilometers down. So how much Swakane gneiss is there in Washington? Not that much. There's just this little small patch that's in this triangle between Wenatchee on the south side, Eniat on the north side, and Leavenworth off to the west. So if there's not that much Swakane gneiss, is it important? Turns out it is a rather significant, important bedrock unit. Now, don't get confused, there, please. There is the Chumstick Arcosic Sandstone on US-2 between Wenatchee and Leavenworth, but that's Eocene. That's younger than 50 million year old sandstone. So it's kind of confusing that we have a deep sandbox of Arcosic Sandstone, the Chumstick Basin, with 
Swakane biotite gneiss, which used to be our Kosick sandstone, and yet the Chumstick sandstone has nothing to do with the formation of the Swakane gneiss. What, am we, what are we saying here? We're saying the Nanaimo sandstone, 80 million years old, is the stuff that's been buried and turned into gneiss and then brought back to the surface. Also, if I flip you around and look through the smoke to the east, I'll make another point that might be interesting to you. There's so much interesting geology at Wenatchee, and one of the concepts is, once you get to the ridge looking uh, south above Wenatchee, that's Mission Ridge. That's Columbia River Basalt Lava, 16 million years old. If you look straight east into the morning sun, that's up on the plateau. German chocolate cake there as well. So there is clearly way more of this Swakane gneiss that extends out that way, but it's been buried and depressed away from the surface by the thick Columbia River basalts, the flood basalts that happened during the Miocene time. Similarly, this Swakane metamorphic rock is beneath Wenatchee, it's beneath US-2, it's beneath Kashmir and Peshastan, but the floor just dropped out in the Chumstick Basin. So we're seeing this stuff here. It's way down deep over there under the basalts. It's way down deep over the hole or around the corner in the hole underneath all the Chumstick sandstone. But here it's at the surface and what we want to continue to do in this short video, what can we connect? Are there, is there any more of this metamorphic Swakane gneiss in Washington and even beyond? Go back to the notes. <laughs> this is my new wrinkle. I'm actually writing out outlines to keep this streamlined the best that I can. The Swakane gneiss is technically in the North Cascades. And the North Cascades of northern Washington is a whole collection of mostly oceanic exotic terrains. In other words, originally made in the oceans and now are part of North America's continent. But saying that the Swakane is part of the North Cascades, not controversial, is kind of weird that almost everything in the North Cascades is absolutely riddled with plutons. Three different generations of magmatic plutons are in the North Cascades. That's the dream team. That's Bob Miller, Stacia Gordon, Mike Eddy for the last five years looking at all these different plutons, these big blobs of magma intruding up through this metamorphic rock that was originally, much of it, sandstone. But to say the North Cascades is by itself is also not appropriate because if you restore the Straight Creek Fault in Washington, you realize that the North Cascades are part of the Coast Plutonic Complex, which suddenly get us up into much of British Columbia and even up to Alaska. And so making this connection between the Nanaimo Basin up in BC and this metamorphic rock in Wenatchee, it's not that big a stretch now if we realize we want to restore stuff. Let's flip you around. So this idea of taking something locally here in central Washington and plug it into something regionally like the North Cascades of Washington, that's no big deal. But then if you restore the Straight Creek Fault and you get the bedrock west of the Straight Creek Fault back down where it belongs, now we're taking British Columbia, some of it, and getting it down juxtaposed against this bedrock in central Washington. That's kind of wild. Then you suddenly realize that the coast plutonic complex, which goes all the way up to Alaska through British Columbia, that this is the southernmost lonely outpost of this giant coast plutonic complex. Suddenly we are in Alaska. We are, that we're making geologic bridges that oftentimes are found just north of Wenatchee, just north of Ellensburg. And so if you haven't caught wind of it yet, 
I want to approach Alaska from the south. I want to take this geology and work our way north. That's one way to tie these things together. Because this isn't the first alphabet. This isn't the first time we've thought about many of these concepts. So I just want to plug in to what we were doing three years ago and just continue. But if we zoom out even more, we realize that this Swakane gneiss matches perfectly with some metamorphic rocks in Southern California. The Polona schist, the Orocopia schist, the Rand schist. Same age, same minerals, same zircons, same signatures all along. And the first geologist to make this match was Robert Hildebrand 15 years ago. And more recently, in 2019, Stacia Gordon and Kirsten Sauer with a paper. Now, what does this say? What? All right. That's how we're going to end this short video. Let's cut to it. This is a paper that is now available to you at nicksentner.com. The Enigmatic Tintina Rocky Mountain Trench Fault, A Hidden Solution to the Baja BC Controversy, author Robert S. Hildebrandt, 2025. Here's a map that may be brand new to you. Let's start with our friend here today, the Swakane Nice. Here's the Orocopia metamorphic rock. So where is the Orocopia schist? So the idea is that these metamorphic rocks behind me have twins. They have beautiful matches to some metamorphic rocks with the same age and chemistry, same detailed chemistry, same detailed mineralogy in Southern California and a little bit of Arizona. The Rand schist, the Polona schist, the Orocopia schist. And don't be thrown by the difference between gneiss and schist. They're essentially the same stuff. The gneiss has just been cooked or, or buried a little bit deeper than the schist. But the protolith or the original rock for those schists in Southern California, same idea. It's the Arcosic sandstone that was originally roughly 80 million years ago. Back to Bob's paper. This is fun. So Bob is saying, look, if you're willing to just be open and think about an idea, can we look at this schematic, which is not drawn to scale? And Bob Hildebrand, 2025, says, let's just take the Swakane Nice of Wenatchee and get it down to California, Southern California. And let's have it right next door to this very similar stuff. Come on. To this very similar stuff, which is so still in Southern California. And you're like, wow, really? Is that really a thing? It is with just a few geologists who are willing to zoom out to this scale. You'll notice this is the Grand Canyon and the Colorado Plateau. And this is an area which is now the Basin and Range Province of Nevada. But if we're going back to the time when these metamorphic rocks were together 72 million years ago, we have a restoration of crust that used to be all together in Southern California and Arizona. And then we're gonna take this stuff and send it north. Does that sound familiar to you? Let's try one other diagram from Bob's paper. The star is the Swakane Nice. The star is the Polona and Orocopia schists. Same stuff, according to Sauer, Gordon, Hildebrand probably a bunch of others. Here's the Colorado Plateau, southern Utah, northern Arizona. 
Here's today's basin and range, but the basin and range is young. We're thinking about bedrock long before the creation of the basin and range province of Nevada, before we do that extension with normal faults. So Bob Hildebrand in this paper says, let's take the Swakane and a bunch of other things in the North Cascades, and can we get them back down to where they were originally, please? Right next door to the Southern California schists. And in this paper, there's six other matches of stuff here in Northern Washington, British Columbia, and yes, Alaska, that can be brought way back down here. Notice where we are. We're in Mexico, we're in Southern California, and we're connecting with this stuff. This is just the beginning of thinking about grand ideas like this from the new Hildebrand paper. I'm obviously a fan. And so therefore, Bob Hildebrand says, we need one major Baja BC fault to take all this geology of a certain age and it matches with this geology of the same certain age. Flip you around to say goodbye. It's just the start of thinking about something like this. Hildebrand is typically not read and not absorbed and not discussed. But for starters, I'm not even sure people read his stuff. I find it fascinating, elegant, simple, and I want to really seriously think about what if he's right? And what if we restore matching bedrock on other sides of this Baja BC fault? How does that change our view of Alaska tectonics, British Columbia tectonics? That's what I want to try to do this winter, at least to start. I don't know where the series will go, but for a start, I want to think on that scale with a simple model that pretty much everybody says cannot possibly be true. I want to think about it possibly being true. Thank you. I love you. And goodbye from a beautiful early October Sunday morning in central Washington.